now we going to call upon stage today's lecture number 5 is from the soul within jonasins from norway hello everyone and welcome um it's been so far um, a magnificent stay here in india i'm very grateful for the generous reception it's been a most warm welcome and it is truly a um, devotional and inspirational country to come to but it it is a little bit like landing into an entirely different planet the adventure continues and it's such a wonderful conference here with east meeting the west and for today's lecture i will present something that i work with in my work daily uh, when i work with clients normally because astrology is consciousness is understanding to understand your own birth chart is to understand who you are and why you are here but we also need to work to strengthen our transition from just operating from a karmic level and into entering into our dharma doing what we are here to to really do and having a joyful life So I studied for many many years uh, meditation which is my I, that's probably why I'm very happy to come to India because most of my teachers are actually from India and it's my first time here so that's even more interesting why didn't I come sooner but there's a time for everything and maybe I was here before who knows there is at least very interesting energies here and this is absolutely what I love to explore the first thing i noticed with india is that the energy is very devotional people are extremely respectful to their teachers they bow we don't bow in the west i wish we did there is something that we left behind and it has to do with honor dignity and respect and respecting human beings for their unique capacity to feel and understand and be who they are This is my approach to every client that I work with in astrology. And I always wondered who are we really? What is it that makes a human being? When we feel each other, we can feel a certain energy. We can feel, oh this person is very safe for me. I feel good love from this person. It's a good human being. And sometimes when we meet other people we think I don't think I want to look into that person's eyes I think it's better for me to just be invisible This is because we have a certain energy transmission and what is important with this energy transmission is that if we understand this we also understand why astrology works Why is it that we can feel the different planetary aspects why is it that the full moon is is operating so strongly for us why do we feel all this up and down some days are good other days are bad some days you have great energy other days you have little energy and it's the rhythm of life and in the astrological chart we can see how each individual responds to this rhythm of life some of us are more sensitive to the moon while others are perhaps more sensitive to the sun or to mercury or to any other planetary aspect and it gives us a unique um, ability to actually work really deeply with each e human and really see how can we develop their um, their personal gifts how can we have more of them in the world there was one man who's been inspiring me greatly and i did my psychotherapy training with this psychosynthesis it's called you all heard about freud i'm assuming yes freud was very uh, concerned with the instincts he believed that you know he he, he was the father of those famous uh, concepts like the oedipus complex and he understood really well how the instincts operates in the body but at the same time as freud was uh, was formulating his ideas we had another person jung carl gustav jung and now him and freud they were friends and jung he was into the archetypes uh, which is actually the astrological signs he was also into uh, the subconscious or the unconscious he was the one who who talked about the shadow 
and our projections, what we sometimes see of ourselves in other people. There was a third person also in this same era that we are not speaking so much of yet. I'm thinking he's perhaps the father of the psychology of the future, and that was Roberto Assagioli. He was born in Italy, and he was a great student of esoteric sciences, actually originating from the East. When you go very far back, you will find this knowledge that he gained his inspiration from came from the Tibetan Kala Chakra Tantra tradition. So it's very ancient knowledge about who is humans. What does it mean to be human? We can call his psychology the psychology of the soul, which is your true self. We can call it the psychology of the will. To have God's will with you in life will make it easier for you to do the right thing. You will create abundance, you will create happiness, you will create what you need in your life. And if there's something that's really healthy, if you have the life you need, you have a healthy life. That's good for the body, it's good for the mind, it's good for the emotions, and most of all, it's good for the world, because if you feel good, people around you will feel much better. So it creates health. My problem with astrology is that you can't really see the soul in the astrological chart. There are some interesting uh, graphics that I can show you which explains a little bit the model of humans that Asagioli used. Let's see if I can find it. Yes, here is something you've probably all seen before, the Shushum Nanadi. There was um, a Nadi astrologer here, and it is through this etheric network, this light body, that we feel each other. It is, we are all in a way connected. If we want to, we can close off, of course, we have a certain protection, but we are all connected, and not just to each other, which is the chakras, they go vertically out. The chakras, they say hello to the world because they go this way. It's me seeing you, you seeing me. But if I want to face God, which chakra do I use? I use the crown. That's when I face God. This is when I understand God and I connect with the root, which is also a vertical chakra, then I connect this God consciousness into earth. That's why you touch the feet of the guru. It is through the feet of the guru that the shakti is expressed. The guru is rooting God into the world. And if that's powerful energy, I guess you all felt that at occasions, that this energy is very, very powerful. It opens up your willpower to live life on earth and be who you are in the best way you can be. Now, um, Asagioli, he had something called the egg, which is a very funny metaphor for an, a, an energy field, but you've probably seen like, there's like, I have a beginning and I have an ending, sort of. I have my comfort zone. Where I'm from in Norway, we are very, very uh, aware of the comfort zone. And I, I feel in India too, they're very aware of the comfort zone. You just don't go up to people and you go all the way up to them. You, you have a little distance, right? You, you give people a little space because when you get into the personal space of anyone, you can feel, okay, that's perhaps a little close, right? So you ask for permission to come that close. This is something we do. We try to say, are, are we better friends now? Eventually, we are such good friends that we might be in union. Now, he had this, uh, an, uh, like a, an egg works well as a symbol for the aura, the energy field. And it is, some of this is very, uh, we are very aware of it. Other things we are not so aware of. And within us, there is also a big, vast world. In, in Christian theology, they say, um, I'm not completely sure if this is correct word by word, but they say that my father's house has many rooms, which means inside you and inside everyone, there are many, many rooms. The persona is so big. Inside of me, I have my mother, my father, my ancestors. I have my moon, I have my sun, I have my planets. I have many different masks that I put on, 
Right now, I'm putting on my astrology teacher mask. If you met me, maybe in the street, I would put on my funny comedian mask. Uh, if you meet me as a mother, I am a mother. So I have many different aspects in my persona, and it's all within me. So the model is very functional, if you want to understand human beings. This is his... Is there a point? Maybe there's a point. Um, I'm not daring to push any button and back and forth on the, the PowerPoint here, but if you can see, this is his field of consciousness. This is where we are right now, in the middle, right? Like the sun, it has this symbol, and in the middle, there's a dot. This is where I am right now. I'm seeing all of you right now. We are all thinking about this moment, hopefully. Maybe some of you are walking somewhere else in your consciousness. You're going, maybe you're hungry, you want to start thinking about food. Or maybe you're tired, you just want to go to bed. But right now we are here, we are in this field, we're thinking astrology. You're absorbing some of the things that I'm saying, and it's this now, this moment of now. You're not thinking about your grandparents. You know they are there, but you're not thinking about them right now. You're not perhaps thinking about the next book you're going to write, because that would be another level of consciousness. Your consciousness is like a point. It's like the eye. The eye. Where is the eye right now? Hopefully the eye is right here. You yeah, know, I've just tried to find the point. There's no problem. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So we have also, you can see there's middle consciousness, middle unconscious, there's what we call the super conscious, and then there's the lower unconscious. There's like little, lots of words to explain. Some things are unconscious to us. I don't remember my great-great-grandfather, but my genetics remembers it. Maybe a little part of him lives through me. So deep, deep, deep in my subconscious, I'm connected to something in the past. Something is coming up in, into my consciousness and it starts to drive, motivate me, it drives me. If I am in my superconscious, which I might be when I meditate, I go to the self, you see the star on top, that's the self, it's the soul, I am that I am. If I go to the self, I have a, a, an experience of, well, uh, weightlessness or uh, an incredible expansion. It's, it's, not, it's not corporal, it's not in my body. I am not in my body at that particular time. I'm with the gods. And what happens then is that you get contact with the super conscious. And this is where we start formulating new ideas that we put into the world. You have an inspired moment. Now, it is very strange that normal psychology has not been investigating what are these higher states of consciousness. Where do people get this ecstasy from? Where do they go into this wisdom aspect? You see, the gurus, they are always there. They always know what to tell you. They know immediately. It's like this. They just know, they see, they know. It's the capacity of any rishi. And it's, it's, it's liberating and it's expansive. It is bringing the world forward. It's bringing your life forward. And we all have this capacity, but most of us are concerned with the middle consciousness. I need to brush my teeth, I need to behave really properly when I talk to people. I have to do what is expected of me. So we are not going up there and we are not going down there either. That's just coming from behind. We call that sometimes the shadow. And that's when we go into our dark selves. Oh, <laughs> like we all can do, I guess, from time to time. We can also put the planets in here. This is just like, it's not a, 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 like a model that is 100% certain, but yes, Jupiter is the teacher. It's the guru in the Vedic astrology, right? And then you have coming, if you can see on the outside of the circle, there is Neptune and Uranus. We are always influenced by everything that comes to us as well. That's why people like Hitler could be so strong, because he fed on the subconscious of the people. Very powerful people have this ability to do this. It's called manipulation. Now, the people don't know it because they are not aware of it. It's in their subconscious. But somebody who has the capacity can do this for good and for bad. There is always the left-hand path and the right-hand path. You can always use this power for the benefit of humanity or for the benefit of yourself. Now, a true seeker would definitely not use it for himself. 
And then you have all, you see the everyday consciousness is filled with Saturn, Venus, Mercury, Mars. It's just what you do and what you live your life, how you enjoy your life. And then at the bottom you have Pluto and then you have the Moon, which is very often just simply instinctual reactions. Like you have an instinctual reaction. I would actually put Mars there too, uh, which is an instinctual reaction to life. The different sub-personas or archetypes, Jung was very busy with the archetypes. He was very fond of our archetypes. The way that I explained, you have different masks. So if your son is strong, you might feel very identified with the hero. It's the archetype. The energy of the sun, which is the energy aspect of it, is the will to be who you are. You have the will to be in life. It's very easy with humanity to feel a little disencouraged. We want to withdraw. The world is difficult. It's a lot of struggle. You have to fight to be alive. Now, the sun is strength. It's radiating. It's coming from you. It's when you have a person being really powerful in himself or herself. It's being in the world as you are. And that is pure energy. And it is its purpose, the sun's purpose, the theme is creation of identity. We don't always know who we are. This is who we are looking for in the astrological chart. Most of us are more naturally attuned to the moon. It's just what we are expected to be, I guess, like our mothers wanted us to be, or our fathers. But when you go into your sun expression, you become the hero, the king, the queen. You become the ruler and creator of your own life. The moon and its archetype is the child mother. Its energy is connection. If you see a person with a lot of difficult aspects to their moon, a bad moon, an afflicted moon, they might have trouble feeling connection with another human being. There is this disassociation. I feel you, but at a distance. You're here, but don't get closer. So a lot of intimacy problems comes with the moon if it's badly aspected. And the moon is very in the body. It's in the body. If you touch the body for more than 20 seconds, you have a release of a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin is a hormone that binds us together. It creates family. That's why the moon is family. Its theme is safety. You don't want to go close to people you don't feel safe with. This is the energy. Mercury is the communicator interpreter. You all have a little voice inside of your head that goes, I don't understand this, or this was very interesting, or, <laughs> you know, you have a commentator, like somebody always commenting on everything you do. That can be a problem, but it's also very nice. If you want to orient yourself in the world, you have to go, well, what is this? Where is this going? What's happening over here? So its energy is curiosity. And of course, its theme is communication. If you don't say it, it's not going to happen. It's the mouth of God. Venus is normally associated with the archetype, the inner, the inner woman. Like, a man will have an impression of a woman on the inside that he's looking for on the outside. A woman will have an impression of the woman on the inside that she's expressing to the world on the outside. It's also the artist, you know, the sensuality, the beauty aspect of Venus, enjoying life. So imagine if something is going wrong here, you can have a lot of trouble with simply enjoying life. Its energy is, of course, love. Now, we have another planet also for love, which is Neptune, but this is the kind of personal love. I like this, I don't like this. These are my values. This person is reflecting my values. Mars is the man, it's the archetypal man, it's the warrior. We all have an inner warrior, even if we are a woman, we will have something that says, it's time to act now. It's the instincts, the adrenals, it goes out into the world, it conquers. This is mine, thank you very much. It says, I'm here. It helps the energy of the sun, but Mars can often run a little wild and do its own thing from time to time. We all know that, and therefore, there can be unnecessary war and conflict. Its primary energy is desire or passion, I'd say. Yes, I want to do it. It's motivation. No, I don't want to do it. I want to do it or I don't want to do it. You either like something or you don't. 
It's not, it's not both. But if you have Mars Venus together in a chart, you can like it and then not like it, and like it and then not like it, you change, right? That's, that's the war between these two. Jupiter is the wise man. Uh, its energy is wisdom. It's a very high energy. And recognition. I'm not talking about recognition in the world. I'm talking rec re recognizing something. Like, what is this? Is this truth? Is this illusion? They're recognizing something in life, finding truth. Saturn is authority. And authority is all about saying no and having that no being respected. People actually respect you. They are not disrespecting you. That is very, very important for health. Its energy is practical intelligence. Saturn is a magician. Saturn knows how to manifest reality. And its energy, is, uh, its theme is boundaries. If you have poor boundaries, you're probably going to find something with the Saturn r m energy inside. Uranus is the renewer. We also call him the revolutionary, the rebel. We've all met the rebel. I don't know, in my society, we have a lot of rebels. You can't say that to me. Children go to their parents. It's different, right? In this society, a little bit more Saturn. You understand authority. In the Western societies, you have a lot of rebels. Like, they're not wanting to listen to the teachers. They just want to do their own thing all the time. Very strong Uranus. Um, they have all, all kinds of ideas. Uranus is connected to the higher intelligence. So there's this incredible fountain of new ideas. It's very inspirational. And its theme is freedom. We all need to have freedom. And a rebel is not created until there's been applied force or bad authority. You create rebels by using bad authority. It doesn't happen by itself. So when we want to change any old structure, we need Uranus. Of course, this is very, very difficult, this battle between Uranus and Saturn all the time the new and the old. We have these archetypes inside of us, so every time we feel something new in our lives, something Uranus, we will have Saturn reacting. No, do you think that's a good idea? We want to not go there. It feels dangerous. Freedom can be very dangerous, especially if you don't know what to do with it. Neptune is the releaser. Um, a, a word for Neptune is surrender. You surrender. You don't know what's going to happen in the future, but you you just surrender to it. Its energy is compassion. You understand people. It's really, truly an energy of a, of a guru. The, 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 the silent understanding. Nothing is said. It's just understood. And its true uh, theme is union. We are all in this together, right? In this soup called humanity, we are all in it together somewhat. And suffering is a global problem, but it's also a personal problem. If your neighbor suffers and you love your neighbor, you will su suffer with him. Pluto is death, which seems it's Shiva. Hmm? It's easier to understand Shiva. Shiva is a good thing too. It's the liberator, right? So it's death in its symbolic form, but also in its more literal form. Its energy is destruction. If you can't destroy the past, if you can't destroy, for instance, illness, if your body is sick, you have to destroy the illness. So you need this destructive energy in your body. You need it in your life. This is not working, oh, get it away. Huh? And then you will have transformation as a result. Chiron is the healer. We use Chiron in Western astrology. It was discovered in 1977. It's not a planet. We know it's a comet thing. It's, is it an asteroid? Could it be a comet? We don't know. But it's been actually a lot of interesting, I wouldn't say research about it, but there are, the myth in itself is very, very interesting. And we all have that aspect inside of us. It has to do with something that's been broken. If somebody dies in your life, you will never completely heal from it. There will always be that little bit inside of you that is broken. If you have cancer and you have to go to chemotherapy, your body will maybe not get back to where it was before the illness. So 
That's what we call the second law of thermodynamics. What is broken cannot be fully healed. And that is a part that we sometimes can call world tiredness. I'm tired of this world. This world is t it's, it's, it's a lot. But it's energy is healing. How do I live with this? And the theme is how do I open up again after being wounded? How do I open up and dare living life again after disease? How do I open up again and love again after destruction? So all these energies we have within us, and they're constantly, you can imagine, it's like the, it's a theater. They're to, as the, we had um, uh, a lecture about aspects, and he said the planets, they see each other. Now, if the planets, as above, so below, are within us, and we are connected through the nadis, the chakras, with them, we, commun we see them too, we can see that some, if you have a bad aspect or a, a challenging aspect between two of these planetary principles, let's say Mars and Saturn, they're not talking very nicely to each other. Mar Saturn is going here, oh, I don't think you should do that. And Mars says, who do you know? What do you care? You know, there can be this battle on the inside. Well, sometimes we have that. I see people, sometimes they go like this, they have like a problem, and then they try to solve it by using first their moon. Is this safe for me? Should I do this? And then they go to their Jupiter. Oh, come on, take a risk. It could be the adventure of your lifetime. And then Saturn again. Oh, I don't know, do you, can you afford that? And then, you know, you have all these discussions. Yeah, yeah, everybody's had this discussion with themselves. It takes forever. And then you come back again to the first argument. It's like, I was here just recently. Why am I here again? You never get anywhere. That's the thing, right? Yes. So here's the guy who's doing the, Mar the Uranus Sun uh, energy. He's the rebel, but not in a very good way. I guess you all recognize this man is Donald Trump. He was born with Sun Uranus conjunction on the nodal axis. He's born in an eclipse. And you can see how he plays the rebel. The, the key word for Uranus is freedom. I want freedom, right? So I want freedom from... How, how does he want freedom? I don't want... I want freedom from the Mexicans. I want freedom from the international trade unions. I just want America to be great again. This is his thing. So he, it's freedom, but... Yeah, well, that's uh, perhaps not a globally oriented way of thinking, and we should expect that from any leader on Earth today. We cannot just think about ourselves. Now, here's another Sun Uranus man, and you can see that he's another kind of rebel. You know, it's still the rebel, because Steven Spielberg made a lot of movies about artificial intelligence, about extraterrestrial communication, he really did something for the world in terms of understanding the new. He was re rebelling against ordinary thinking. Why can't there be any ETs on the planet? Why does it have to be so... Why can't we imagine a life with artificial intelligence? And he started putting these visions out into his, in, in his movies, right? So it's very interesting how he manifests the rebel in a very different way. And we all have these in our, in our own charts. And I'm just giving these two examples to show you that it's a very big variety. It's all within a spectrum. I can have a rebel, but it's maybe my rebel have, you know, got the ability to actually listen to Saturn, listen to tradition, listen to my parents. Like, I, I'm not always just doing what I want. So it's not just one model fits all, it's a variety of expressions. But what I'm inviting you to see, it's a very nice way to work with any birth chart, is try to see the moon as a person inside that person. Try to see the sun as a person inside that person, Saturn as a person inside that person, and then you will see, little by little, how healthy is the moon, how healthy is the sun, how healthy is the Mercury, what, you have a Mercury that never says things? Where's the Mercury? The inner Mercury is perhaps standing inside this person's brain, thinking a lot, but it can't get out. Like, why can't I get my Mercury? Why can't I just say it? And you can be very good at saying certain things, but other things you don't say at all. So it's all about this theme again, communication. So I use this model as a very... 
it's a very efficient model if you want to combine this understanding what is energy and what is consciousness. How do you can create a real healing with your client? How can you create even more substantial information to the client when they go, that's exactly how it is, yes, and they have an experience, not just here, but here in their bodies, in their energies, and after that, they will come extremely vitalized out from a reading. And I think many people do this intuitively, like they do it without knowing it. That's how we open up to each other. But it is, at least it's been for me, a very helpful model in order to understand um, how it is that we operate and how can we use this sensitivity that we have, this very many multi-dimensional ways of being in a constructive way. It certainly made me a lot more aware of what I just took for granted. I don't know if you have a little bit experience with meditation. Sometimes you notice that you disappear. And then you wake up again after you don't know how long, of course, but you realize you're thinking about something. You're not meditating, you're thinking about something. That's when I, we try to wake up. Inside that moment, there is a moment where we need to wake up and go, where was I and what, was I, what, were, what, were, what happened? What, what, why did I go into some subconscious dreaming? This is where accidents happen. This is where misunderstandings happen. This is where things go from creation to reaction. Yes, well, I guess that was wonderful. That perfect last words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>